Before we get into spoilers, let me say this for those who want none. Rise of the Beast is a fun Transformers film that continues the right direction that the also fun but forgettable Bumblebee started while providing solid entertainment and even some surprises. Ultimately, it feels too safe, too slow, and wastes the title character of the Maximals. Now, let's dive into spoilers. Do you like movie reviews and spoiler discussions? Then hit like on this video. The elephant in the room. Similar to Black Adam with its Superman cameo, that final reveal, proving years of rumors and leaks being true and following up on a decade old announcement, the G.I. Joe are crossing over with the Transformers. I personally love Snake Eyes as a reboot, and it sucked it bombed at theaters during COVID. And with these Transformers movies being reboots themselves, although no one is really sure as Paramount is back and forth with Bumblebee and Silent here, this could be what both franchises need. I left the theater feeling genuinely excited and surprised by that tease I did not see coming. I honestly thought Noah was being recruited into Sector 7, and maybe they were trying to tie back into the old movies and not the new timeline? Unicron presents issues there, but I suppose he could still burrow in the earth or whatnot given how he disappears with the transwarp key. I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with a crossover multiverse of Transformers timelines eventually, that's just the thing right now. Depending on which route they decide. For now though, I'm going with these are a reboot timeline. When Noah put on Mirage as a suit, which I was informed has precedent in the source material, I even thought to myself that it reminded me of the soups from Rise of Cobra. So I chuckled when it came to be that maybe that was intentional. These franchises can really go well together and finally make the human characters way more interesting than they ever have been in the Transformers movies because they're G.I. Joes. Storm Shadow and Starscream versus Snake Eyes and Optimus Primal? Uh, yes please. Add in Optimus Prime and Duke and other characters? Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. However, I was really disappointed by the rest, largely. As mentioned, with a title like Rise of the Beasts, the Maximals are wasted beyond measure. The prologue is so cool and promising, and then they don't show up until over an hour later. In a two hour film, do the math. What little we see is incredible, but feels like a tease. Their backstory is glossed over and only makes any kind of sense if you're familiar with the best Transformer show, Beast Wars. Optimus Primal is appropriately epic, but even he feels shortchanged by the end. Air Razor has a decent role, but it's cut short and underdeveloped. Cheetor looks cool and has a couple lines to emphasize plot, but no character. Rhinox doesn't even speak. And where's my boy Rat Trap? I stayed frustrated with these aspects the whole movie. The only time we see them maximize and transform is in the final act, and there's so much going on, we don't even really get a good look. And it's hard to tell them apart on a gray battlefield. What little moments we get with Primal are fantastic, and I love his relationship into that with his Maximals and with Optimus Prime. But it's a serious letdown how the Maximals aren't maximized to their fullest in a movie supposedly about them. See what I did there? I strongly feel that the Autobots and Maximals should have swapped roles in the script. The Maximals should have been the focus that Noah meets and runs into and then the Autobots show up later to help. So much of the Autobots plot feels rehashed and all too familiar to so many other human plots in Transformers movies by this point. Optimus Prime's more rugged, angry attitude was more than welcome though. The human characters are fine, Noah's motivations are well established and he gives a good performance, but he's not delved into as much as I like, but I did find his relationship with his brother that's unwell very compelling. It is for me, but Elena? Don't know anything about her. She's full of cliches about museums, and there's honestly not many human characters in this, but they take up a ton of screen time that there are, and their action sequences are really similar by the end, and it just got a little tiresome. Noah getting to become one with Mirage is kind of weird, not explained at all, but also a really cool way to further the bond between man and machine. Mirage, though, was a standout, and Pete Davidson's performance was the highlight in the humor. He absolutely nailed it, and his lines are the only ones I laughed at. Any other humor falls completely flat on its face. It's not cringe, it's just not funny. It just didn't work for me. Scourge is a menacing villain, but a little forgettable and you never know that was Peter Dinklage voicing him given all the effects on the voice. It's a little sad. I loved Ron Perlman as Primal and Peter Cullen as expected is exceptional as Optimus Prime, as he has been for decades. The action itself, really most of the film, is solid and directed well, with some visual moments that are just awesome, crowd pleasing even. But I never felt the weight of them quite like I did in the Michael Bay films, even the bad ones. Same can be said about the CGI, it's not as clean or as refined as Bay's either, with some really awful moments of green screen and others that looked like volume technology. 
Overall though, it's good stuff you'd expect from Transformers and it's visually pleasing, while not being overly cut by some of the other carnage in the Bay films. What's absolutely aggravating, not counting the G.I. Joe twist, is how the film will not commit to any of its ideas. Bumblebee dying shocked me, but the first moment they even questioned whether he could be revived told me that he would be revived. That moment is executed well, but robs from the tension earlier. Mirage sacrifices himself too. Just kidding, he's fine and bonds with Noah to become one. Cool. Then Noah rebuilds him. Okay, closure. But can they merge again? Why not? Leave that later as a question. What was the point of all that? Optimus also decides to sacrifice himself, again, for that to be stopped immediately. You see what I'm getting at? The non-committal attitude of introducing huge deaths or monumental plot shifts and possibilities and lore is completely void of meaning when you undo it moments later. It makes one ask, what was the point? Ultimately, I really didn't dislike this film. It's serviceable, fun, and even exciting at times. Passable. Beyond the final twist, it's far more forgettable than it should have been, was approached wrongly, marketed incorrectly, and wasted the characters who got everyone excited all while not committing to the bold notions it dared to introduce, leaving a bit of a hollow feeling. The end tease does elevate all that came before, but not enough to excuse it. Black Adam had a similar situation, but I found that movie delivered on what it promised far more consistently while still being elevated by the NTs that we were robbed of later. If you like Transformers movies, you'll enjoy this one as it is. If you don't like them, I doubt you'll like this. If you love Beast Wars, I could see you going either way, as you'll be happy to see the characters that do show up, but I suspect disappointed in how they're used. How little they're used. Like Bumblebee, it's still on the path of course correction in executing coherency and scripting, just not the humor. But they still have a lot to work on in actually structuring the story correctly with setups and payoffs, let alone marketing. Give me more Maximals, Paramount, and bring on G.I. Joe. Still pretty dumbfounded that happened. That was a fantastic moment and it does leave a better taste in your mouth when you leave because of it. That matters. I give Transformers Rise of the Beast three out of five stars. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your views. Make sure you subscribe and get notified if any time I upload a new video and there's more content coming soon because there's always movies on the way. But remember, always look for the good.